K7 returns. America's number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries, on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you another story of today. Here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, the smuggling of undesirable aliens has always been a problem to the great nations of the world. Today, it has assumed major importance, since the undesirables who thus enter a country are often spies, and spreaders of propaganda sent in with orders to undermine and sabotage. It is the story of a smuggler spy who brought human cargo over a border by aeroplane and on his return trip carried out military secrets and plans which John Holbrook introduces now. Thank you, K-7. Military intelligence of an important power found that certain valuable plans and important information was being stolen and carried out of the country. Investigations followed, and the activities of a master spy were uncovered. B-9 was called into the case, and armed with the results of the investigations. We join him as he and his assistant, Rita Drake, are let into a ramshackle room in the slums of a great city. You will wait here. Thank you. Oh, B-9, this place is horrible. And that man who let us in. Don't worry about him, Rita. He's an undercover operator. He arranged this interview. But let's sit down. We don't know how long we'll have to wait. I've never seen such a room. Do people actually live here? Probably not. Looks to me like a room used for just such meetings as this one of ours. While we're waiting, I'll outline our case since you've just come into it. We're after a man who's both a smuggler and a spy, Rita. What do you mean? According to the information I have, this man smuggled aliens into this country. Some of the men he brings in are his own operators. They'll never be able to cross the borders in the usual ways. Well, how does he bring them in? By airplane. He's made a fortune, Rita. He brings aliens in and carries information out. Do you know who he is? That's what we're here to find out. The undercover man who let us in here has arranged for us to talk to a sailor who paid $500 to be smuggled into the country. This man who's coming is not a spy. And in return for information, we're going to let him remain here. You mean you bargained? We're in a way. This sailor is all right, Rita. His wife was here. That's why he paid $500 to come in. He may be able to give us the information. That was... Oh, here he is now. Come in. What's the matter? I thought somebody followed me. You are uh, Agent B-9? Yes. Don't be nervous. Sit down. What do you want to know? Everything you can tell us about how you came into this country. Where did you land? At the city across the border. You know where I mean. Yeah. All right. Now, you paid $500 to be carried across the border by airplane. Yes. Who did you pay that money to? To, uh, to a man named, uh, Sotiro. Sotiro. Yes, I know him. You mean, uh, Abo Sotiro, don't you? I don't know his first name. Yes, go on. Uh, how did you hear of this Sotiro? I was told on the ship. They said if I had $500, I was to stand in front of a church at 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. A black car would stop. I would go to it and ask the question, which way is the airport? I did. Get down, we just... Oh, he's been shot. Wait. I gotta take a look at him. Is he all right? I'm afraid not, Rita. He gave us the information we need, but he's paid for it with his life. <laughs> Two days later, a 
great ship landed at the city across the border. At six the next morning, Rita, dressed in the rags of a refugee, stood in front of a church. In her bag, she carried $500 in marked bills. Within the church, B-9 watched the scene outside. A man stood near Rita. A minute or two later, a black car, its curtains drawn, pulled to the curb. Which way to the airport? Get in the car. All right, driver. Wait. Which way to the airport? Oh, so you asked that question, too. I thought there was only to be one. They said on the ship... Never mind that... what they said. You talk too much. Get in. watched the car as it pulled away. Then he went around the corner, stepped into another car, and followed. There was little traffic in the early morning, and he just managed to keep the smuggler's car in sight. About 20 miles out of the city, it turned into a small road. B-9 continued for a mile before he stopped and walked back. In the meantime, the smuggler had reached his destination. Get out, both of you. Driver, you will unlock the barn door. Yes. You, the girl, come here. Is, is this the airport? You do not need to know where you are. Have you got $500? Yes. Give it to me. Wait, it, it's in my bundle. Here it is. Give it to me, I said. Right. Three, four, five. Good. Mademoiselle, you will be locked in that barn. Tonight we will come for you. All right, you. You're next. Here is my money. What about food and water? Food and water? Oh. If you have another hundred dollars... No, uh... it's too much. Uh, then get in the barn and keep quiet. You get in there with her. Hurry, I haven't time to talk. All right. Close the door. Rita and the alien were locked in. There was no food... No water, not even a window. An hour dragged by. Oh, it's dusty. I'm thirsty. Why couldn't they leave us water? Water costs more. The man on the ship said that. I have some in the bottle. Please, may I have a drink? No. You should have brought your own. Stop talking. You're not very kind. All right, don't talk. The minutes dragged by. Then Rita heard a sound at the door. Someone was working on the lock. There's someone outside. I have a knife. If it is the police. And I have a pistol. Do you feel it in your back? Uh, Don't try to move. Mademoiselle. I said not to move. The door's opening. Rita. B9. Are you all right? Yes. Be careful, B-9. This man has a knife. He was going to use it. I'll take care of that. Put your hands behind you. Uh, you're the police. I am a special agent. Here, Rita. Snap his handcuffs on him. B-9, I paid my money to Sotaro. I know it was him from your description. Yes. I saw him from the church. What are we going to do next? First, I'm going to get this man back to the city. Then I'll dress in his clothes. Later, I'm bringing someone back here to lock us in. We're going to wait here together? That's right. Tonight, when Sotaro comes back for us, we're going to take him across the border with us. Then we'll arrest him. But how will you make him cross? We will find a way to do that tonight. themselves to be locked in the old barn. That night, about nine o'clock, Sotaro's car stopped in front of the barn. At about the same time, a plane came down on the field nearby.
A minute later, Sotiro and the pilot walked toward the barn. Yeah, he'll be nine. Suppose he recognizes you. I don't think he will. Not in these clothes. I'll try and keep out of the light. Have you your gun ready to use, Rita? I've got it. They're coming for us. All right. Come out. You're ready to start. Only two of them. Yes. Which way do we go? To the plane. Watch them, Sando. See that they get in. I lock this door again. Walk straight ahead. Now, get in the plane. Have your gun ready, Rita. We'll take the pilot, and I'll go back for Satyro. All right, pilot. I've got you covered. Satyro! Look out, B-9! Satyro's behind you! <laughs> Drop that gun, Satyro. If you don't, I'll use mine again. The pilot, he's been shot. You killed him. Oh, Satyro, it was one of your shots, intended for me, that hit him. Rita, keep Satyro covered. Yes. I'll get his gun. Uh, perhaps if we could talk this over. We'll talk it over, but on the other side of the border. Now hold your hands behind you. What are you going to do with me? Put these handcuffs on you for safety's sake, Sotaro. Now get in the plane. B-9, we can't leave this man here on the ground. Keep your eye on Sotaro, Rita. Now look at the other one. He's gone, Rita. Get in the plane. Oh, but B-9... Get in, Rita. These men were not only murderers, they were smugglers and spies. They were taking Sotaro across the border and turning him over to the military authorities. The other poor devil is better off here. He would have faced a firing squad if Sotiro hadn't shot him. And that will be Sotiro's fate. When Sotiro was sentenced, the military court called him one of the worst enemies in a century. Some spies are not as desperate and ruthless, but they are without conscience or pity. Their acts often bring death to thousands. Listen for my next story. This is K-7 speaking. Mm -hmm.